Good morning everyone, it's Mark Weens. I'm in Manila, Philippines, and today I'm joining a group to go on an extreme food tour in Pampanga, which is a little north of Manila. And Pampanga is known for its food. It is one of the culinary, one of the food centers of the Philippines. And by the way, right now I'm in the bathroom because the baby is asleep in the room. One of the main reasons that I came to the Philippines this time was to join this event. And this is put on by the World Street Food Congress uh, with KF Sito from Singapore and his team, which is called Makan Sutra. It's a preservation of local food in the country. And so it's gonna actually be a pretty, pretty big group that's gonna be on this food tour. So I'm gonna do my best to get as many video shots as possible and I'll be filming myself, but it should be fun. And this is on. I just I just saw on the on the release form that it's a 15-hour food frenzy safari. So we're gonna be eating a lot of local Filipino food today. Ah. Oh, that coffee is terrible. This is from the hotel. Oh wow! I don't even I don't even taste the coffee in there. So actually our first stop is right in Manila. We haven't driven yet to Pampanga. And we're stopping at a place called Bula Luhan Sa España. And we're here to eat a dish called Bulalo. Baro, baro. Baro. We got the Bulalo. There is some fried fish. There's some other kind of deep fried thing. And then the, there's the other main dish is an eggplant, which has been flattened out into a complete flat, like almost like pancake omelet looking. So are from? Uh, from Thailand. Thailand? Oh, we visited Thailand last week. Good, one. good. And you are from? Yeah. from Thailand. Thailand is a We're gonna have a lot of food today. So I'm gonna just pace myself. I'm gonna have, I'm starting off with just a little bit of rice. I'm gonna start with this eggplant. And there's egg in here too, right? Yeah, this is roughly. It's like a. Oh, that's awesome. Mm. It's like a crispy fried oily omelet. But then the, the eggplant inside is really creamy and really soft. Oh, that broth. That is a, a really rich, meaty, meaty flavored broth. And it's quite salty as well. Okay, next I'm going to try these little fish. And the soup is really good. Oh, yeah. Those are just crispy all the way through. They're salty. They are... Any kind of little deep fried fish like that are fantastic. <laughs> Check off. Check no, we gotta share it. We're gonna share it though, right? Uh, it's all yours. Who wants to have the bone marrow? All yours. So Bulalo is known for its bone marrow. And so that's the main part of eating Bulalo. So I got the bone here, the bone marrow. And I'm just gonna pick this up. <laughs> oh, look at that bone marrow. Yeah. It's awesome. It almost tastes like it almost has the texture of scrambled eggs, but more more soft and like oh just melts in your mouth. Oh bone marrow is just one of the the ultimate meaty things to eat. Oh and a hanging piece of beef as well. That was absolutely delicious. Uh, and I actually really liked the, the eggplant, the eggplant omelet. That was wonderful. But in addition to that bone marrow, what a, what a wonderful day, way to start the day. We just made it to Pampanga and we are stopping off. This place is called Aching Lilian. And this is a, a heritage, a legendary. She's a she owns a private kitchen restaurant. Really nice place. I think it's her house as well, and then she opens it as a restaurant. But you have to, I think you have to call ahead and reserve kind of like private dining. These things have become iconic. They are flavors that represent a country. So this to me is heritage. 
culinary culture. They have all the food set up buffet style. You go through the line and get all the, the food that you want. I'm hanging out with Bowling. She Hi. is also from Thailand. Yes. And what's your what's your Instagram? Eat and shout. Eat and shout. You gotta go check out her Instagram. And she also loves to eat. Yes. But Mark always hungry. <laughs> And this is very traditional Pampangan cuisine. I got one of everything, so there's different types of cocinos, there's a blood dish. This is what I'm looking forward to eating most, which is a Pampangan tamale. Mm -hmm. Tamale. Do, do they call it tamales also? Tamale. Okay. And so I've, I've eaten Mexican tamales many, many times. But this is, what's unique about this is that uh, Mexican tamale is normally made with corn flour and then it's also normally wrapped in a corn husk before it is uh, steamed and cooked. But for the, the Filipino tamale, it is made with rice flour and it's wrapped in a banana leaf and then steamed. So this is what I'm looking forward to eating most off this whole plate. You want to taste it too? Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Oh, there's like a thick outer. Well, there's like there's like ten layers of banana leaf. It's a lot of banana leaf layers, and it feels oh, there's egg in it too. I'll check that out. It feels kind of kind of like jelly. It feels a little like jelly. You did. <laughs> okay. I think I just picked this up. Mm. It has a very jelly texture. It's kind of mild in flavor, but really, really gelatinous and almost like, yeah, like jelly. Compared to a, a corn tamale, this is very, very light and kind of like refreshing almost. And another thing that I'm very interested to try from this plate is a, is it a type of tocino? Yeah, but it's carabao. 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 Okay, which is water buffalo, a water buffalo and it looks kind of like it's like it kind of like stripped and kind of kind of sticky in texture and very red in color. Mmm. Oh, it's really really rich. Um, it does have a, a sticky texture to it, but then at the same time you can taste like the meat is it's pulled, so it's like it also has a nice sour taste to it. That was really good, and that's really some some really heritage, traditional recipes that she's cooking here, and she's preserving the, the culture and the food, which is really awesome. She's really nice. Thank you very much, that was very nice. Yes. Yeah, I enjoyed it very much. Yeah. Awesome, man. Yep, you bet. Awesome. Uh, if you don't have local friends, you will never, never find this little gem of a spot. Definitely. I have no idea where I am. I just got out of a bus. <laughs> awesome to be hanging out with Sito today. Yay! And we have made it to the next restaurant, which is called Taldawa. Taldawa. What are we eating here? Look at it. It's like, it's like a little, I don't know, somebody's oh, house or cool. somebody's courtyard or somebody's village. Look around. They even have a basketball court here. Love the atmosphere already. And it's a already. small little uh, charcoal kitchen down here. You can take take a look. It's so cool. authentic. We can see her it's cooking. so charming. Yeah, she's just on there awesome. stewing this uh, jet black pot of. Uh, uh, she does a lot of stuff with goat and duck. I'm gonna see if I can take a look in the kitchen real fast to see the cooking. <laughs> What's, is this, this is Sinigang. This entire area just smells like goat. It does. Oh, it's a wonderful it aroma. You know, when you put it. goat into a Sinigang soup, which is a national soup, it's a very sour soup. Feel the beauty of how um, the gaminess of goat is reduced in this mm. charming sour soup. It's just beautiful. Have it over rice and we'll be crying in a while. You know? My mouth is watering thinking yeah, about let's it. Let's do this. I can't wait to try it. There's no spoon. This what? Goat. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna try the adobo first, and this is adobo with duck. 
But the problem is, the white boards are prohibited on this road. Oh, wow. So that's why it's salty. Oh, that is so tender. And people are losing the Oh, taste. it's salty. It's a little bit sour. And I think I can really taste the, the, the garlic in there. <laughs> Okay, next up I'm gonna try the sinigang, which is goat. It's a goat sinigang dessert in our itinerary. Oh yeah. We got a little bone chart in there. Mm. That's the type of dish that you know it's goat. Yeah, there's no denying the goatiness of that. And it is wonderful. It has a just a natural goat kind of taste to it. The broth is a little bit sour. Uh, and you can also tell that it's just been boiled for many, many hours so that the meat is tender. And then the 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 flavor of the meat has just sort of completely um, completely gone into that broth as well, so it's really rich and a little bit oily and delicious as well. Then the final dish is the caldereta. Oh yeah! Oh, that goat is so tender. It, it does taste like a stew, like a tomatoey stew. There's carrots in there. There's potatoes in there, but it's all about that goat. That's just so tender and so meatily flavorful. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, the heart is awesome. It's a little bit, just has a slight rubbery texture to it. You like the heart also? Yes, that's the first thing I think. Oh yeah, so there were a couple of hearts in there. Mm. The heart is one of the, the best single bites of the entire bird. What do you call in, in Tagalog? This balloon balloon. Balloon balloon. Balloon balloon. Balloon balloon. Nan. Balloon balloon. Nan. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Gizzard. Gizzard. Uh, the, mm. the, the, this this one called. You know, yes. you can find great restaurants anywhere in the world, but this only here. And, and her dish is distinctly Philippines. So this is why I celebrate a humble home cooks like this. Mm. This is the highlight of this food tour for me so far. Really good food. Love the atmosphere, this type of place. Oh, I better not get hit by a by a car. Uh, but it's also one of those successful meals where it feels like you're wearing lip gloss because of the that natural oiliness of that goat. Next restaurant we're going to is called 25 Seeds, and this is a Filipino restaurant, but it's a modern Filipino restaurant. Uh, the chef who owns this restaurant, who's a really cool guy, he's been with us on this food trip, and this is his restaurant that we're gonna try out next. getting ready to prepare his paella sisig, which is a combination of paella and sisig, and the first time ever presented. To then give you the caramelization, the sweet flavor, of, and then we use margarine. Woo! And then we put all the, the pork. And then he tossed in the rice, coated it, every, mixed it with all the rice, and then he topped it with banana leaves, and it steamed and baked sort of at the same time. The smells, the porky smells are just unbelievable. Chef just dished me a portion. 
I came outside here on the balcony to get some, some better lighting. Oh, that's beautiful. And I'm gonna just quickly to begin with, I will squeeze on that calamansi. And I wanna take a bite with everything in it. Get some of those chilies in there. Wow. Oh, what a dish. The rice is gooey, but then it's broken, the texture is broken by the little bits of pig face, which are slightly cartilage in texture. And then you've got the chili in there, the freshness of the, the calamansi. That is just like a, like a casserole, but a glorious casserole. I had to get another scoop of the paella, and then also got some of the chicken, some of the other dishes, some, some shrimp, and then they also have kare kare, a Filipino peanut curry with seafood. And I will begin actually with this this uh, mussel with I I added some of the the kare kare sauce into the mussel, so I will drink and slurp. Mm. That's quite a sweet peanut sauce. Hello, how are you, man? Nice to meet you. <laughs> that was a, an absolutely amazing dish. And we are now walking through Pangpanga on our way to the next restaurant. You here for the 15 hour? Hey, well, hey, join me, join me. Next up we are at Suzy's Cuisine and this is another legendary restaurant in Pampanga. We are eating mostly a selection of desserts and they have most of their signature desserts laid out on the table. I'm not hugely into desserts, but I will pick a bite of the couple of their signature desserts. This is one of their signature desserts. It's called Tibok Tibok. And it's a, it's kind of like a pudding made, which, but I think it's made from goat milk. Oh yeah. Oh wow, and it tastes of coconut too. And then it's like a really, really thick, sticky pudding-like consistency. Next one I'm trying is called Sapin Sapin. Sticky consistency. It's pretty sweet. A couple bites of sweet desserts for me, and I'm just about good. That was a little too sweet for me, but good to try some traditional desserts. We're walking back to the bus now, and we are driving back to Manila, and gonna eat some more food. Traffic was an absolute nightmare coming into Manila. Uh, but we just came to this gigantic mega mall. And we are next going to Makan Sutra, which is Sito's project and his hawker, his hawker food court. I'm hungry. It's been so long since we ate. Look at all of this amazing food. And a lot of it is Singaporean, Malaysian food. There's some clay pot rice. What's up, man? There is some... Um, Hello! I'm gonna try this satay right here, right now. Oh, yeah. oh the, the cumin on there is wonderful. Clay pot rice is one of the ultimate comfort foods. Oh yeah. Oh indeed. That is ridiculously comforting. All the smokiness. That's really, really good and really hot and fresh. We are walking now to the final destination on this extreme Filipino food tour day and saving the ultimate for the last. Whoa! Whoa! Look at that. The sound of love. Everybody, one, two, three. Wow. Wow. 
everywhere in the Philippines they have their own version of lechon, which is the roast pig. And each region, I think, has their own recipe and their own style of cooking a lechon. But one of the most famous and the most beloved in all of the Philippines is in Cebu. And so this is one of the best places to eat lechon in Cebu, but it has they have just opened a branch in Manila. Cheers! Cheers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, crunchy. Oh, it's ridiculously crunchy. Mm. Oh, oh, that's insane. That's insane. Mm. It's so crispy. It's actually like one of the crispiest things you could possibly eat in the whole world. It is just insane. That's like a that's like a, a crispiness that you never want it to end. <laughs> He's supposed to tilt his head, yeah, and then close his eyes. Okay, close his eyes. That's how good it is. Like, oh man! Wow! 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 <laughs> you gotta tilt. You gotta tilt. <laughs> Let me taste the meat real fast. How is the meat? Oh, you haven't gone to the meat. I haven't even made it to the meat yet. How? You can just taste all of those herbs. You can taste the lemongrass just embedded into that meat. This is one of those pieces of meat that you just actually want to, you barely even want to chew. You just want to leave it in your mouth and just <laughs> suck on it. The contrast of the, the most crispy thing you could possibly put in your mouth with the most creamy, tender thing you could possibly put in your mouth, both together at once. Yeah, it's, it's insane. It's juicing in my mouth right now. Thank you, my friend. You survived. Yeah. You did it. You oh, did yeah. it. The commando foodie. Look at that. Look Survived at that. the food challenge. No kidding, huh? No kidding. The 15 real hour food frenzy. <laughs> that was awesome. Bravo. It's the baby is sleeping again, so I'm in the bathroom again. Uh, but I want to just say a big thank you to Sito, to the whole Makan Sutra team, and the World Street Food Congress, and everyone who helped put that food tour together and organize everything. That was fantastic. And it was a lot of fun to meet a lot of other food lovers and just to hang out and eat. A big thank you to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, leave a comment below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you again for watching, and also, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you click subscribe now, and I will see you on the next video. Thank you again for watching.